Hello there. Welcome to Carstead Partners Packaging Spotlight. Hi, this is Kevin Carstead with Carstead Partners here with Packaging Spotlight. And I have Mike Ferrari of Ferrari, Ferrari Innovation Solutions. Correct, Mike? Did I get the name yes. right again? You got it. Perfect. <laughs> and Mike and I are going to just do a little bit of a Label Expo rehash. Uh, Mike just got back from, from Label Expo. You look really good with all that... Uh, that uh, uh, um, jet lag and everything behind you, and the like. So, Mike, tell me, what was different about this cycle? You and I have been to a lot of these label expos, and that. What was different about this cycle than than other cycles? Well, Kevin, uh, first, thanks again for having me, and uh, second, um, as we talked in the uh, pre-label expo uh, conference, yeah. we suspected that this would be a packaging uh, show. And it certainly turned out to be exactly that. Uh, there was a lot uh, beyond labels. So there were folding carton, uh, flexible film uh, discussions, shrink sleeves. The whole bit was there. So that certainly was new. And I think the second thing is it was a total digital show. There were some 20 plus, uh, I lost count there, <laughs> of uh, digital uh, OEMs. And they were all busy. Okay. Well, that's good. And and you you said that there was a lot of folding carton stuff. Elaborate a little bit on the folding carton, you know, the things that you saw there. I know you spent a lot of time at the HP booth and they brought all their whole arsenal of of tools there. Tell us a little bit about the 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 uh the folding carton side of of things. Sure. Well, uh certainly the uh wide format, wide sheet uh presses which specifically we should uh uh give some definition what is wide. Wide is uh, nominally the 30 inches wide yep. by 21 and three quarter uh, in in length. Um, those presses got a lot of attention. There certainly were sales of those presses at the label show. Yeah. So that that certainly is new. But I think also the bigger story, uh, Kevin, is the whole supply chain that now we were seeing. Uh, also, the partner to HP was. Uh, Hicon and with the Hicon Euclid, you can uh, print uh, in the uh, 30,000 press, take the stack over to the Hicon Euclid, and complete the digital creasing and die cutting. And you've, you've got a sample of some really cool die cutting there. I, I'm I sure do, you're waiting. Uh, so here's a sample of decoration. So it's not just the ability to uh, crease and cut. But also to decorate and to do some uh, fine fine tune things and uh, the ECMA uh, award in the, uh, that just took place in Europe went to Antelope, who in fact used the Hikon uh, Euclid in order to uh, decorate cut and, and decorate their box. Okay. So okay. I that was, so the total end to end workflow is clearly now becoming far more exciting than where we've been in the past. Yeah, good, good. And, and Mike, you, you also said that you had spoken to a lot of brand owners that were there. And a lot of brand owners go to that show to see what's new and see what's there. Um, and you spoke to them from, from all over the world. Tell me a little bit about that. What, what did you talk about? What were they interested in? What, what are some of the buzzwords going there? Well, Kevin, that was probably the most exciting part of, of this trip for me personally. Uh, Players uh, like Nestle, Frito-Lay, uh, Coca-Cola, P&G, uh, my former company, and uh, Unilever uh, were people that I personally had one-on-ones with. And they're interested in really starting to get into the details of what some of these uh, programs that connected the Internet with packaging were, uh, what the, how it will change their workflow, and they're starting to dig deeper rather than just stay at the surface of comparing what's the speed of the press, mm -hmm. uh, what's the cost. They're now getting far beyond that and into the details. Almost I felt an acceptance of, okay, digital is here. Now I've got to get in and start um, seeing how I can use it myself. Very exciting. Okay, and and what other things did you see? Because I think we want to do another segment on on uh, on that topic. We'll dig in a little deeper into into that topic. But what else did you see, um, new technology wise, or or anything at the at the show? You mentioned there was a bunch of of uh, inkjet label guys, or you know other label guys, uh, you know OEMs. What else did you see? Right, I uh, I certainly got a chance to tour the uh, entire floor. Um, uh, there were 
a number of folks that were adding an additional color in the inkjet space. Uh, some of the CMYK folks were now adding white. Uh, some were adding UV curable inks uh, to try to pick up and deal with some of the issues they had there. Uh, so that was exciting. It appeared that uh, th there was an additional, I don't know where the numbers are going to come out, Kevin, but certainly judging from my eyes, starting from when the doors opened on day one to when they closed, uh, the place was really filled with people. Uh, it seemed that the attendance was higher than ever before. Oh, great. And so great. Um, there was another announcement then uh, made uh, by Indigo where they introduced Silver Ink. Yeah, so that's what I was going to ask you about. Yeah, steps up the the game on metallics, so that okay. was uh, nice to see. Now, is that going to be offered on the uh, the WS series, the the six thousand series, and as well as the the new machines? That is correct. Okay, great, great, great. Well, Mike, it was. I'm glad that we we did this little little rehash. We're going to do another one in a, in in a little bit, so there'll be some more stuff coming out to the to the viewing public, but. I appreciate you taking some time with me tonight, and uh, we'll get into some, some more later. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Mike.